time of recording. The England uh, squad has been trimmed down to a 19-man squad. So, um, the 19-man squad that has now been confirmed by head coach Sean Wayne for his first England game are John Bateman from Wigan, Daryl Clark, Mike Cooper and Ben Curry from Warrington, Tom Davies from Catalans, uh, Liam Farrell from Wigan, Luke Gale, Ash Hanley from Leeds, Morgan Knowles from Saints, Reese Lynn from Wakefield, Johnny Lomax from Saints, Paul McShane from Cass, Tommy Makinson from Saints, Mikkel Ledsky from Leeds, Joe Philbin and Stefan Ratchford from Warrington, Sam Tompkins from Catalan Dragons, Alex Wormsley from St. Helens and Joe Westerman from the Wakefield Trinity side being recalled for his first international squad appearance for seven years. Um, Morgan Knowles will make his first England appearance, although not a proper cap uh, in this game, of course. Um, Tom Davies and Mikkel Ledsky will be the other uh, debutants, as well as Paul McShane at 31, looking to make his first appearance for England. And will most definitely do that because he's the uh, him and Daryl Clark are the two hookers picked. James Roby was left out because he's too old to play a game like this in the middle of the season. Yeah, you know what you're getting from James Roby. And yeah. That the less games you can burden them with and risk him in getting injured, the better. So from the 24-man squad, it's Toby King, Jerry McGilvery, Dan Sargentson, who's banned anyway, Jake Wardle and George Williams, who is unattached and unfit, um, who miss out from that 19-man squad. So some parts of that squad pick themselves, don't they? Sam Tompkins will definitely be fullback. Luke Gale and Johnny Lomax will definitely form the halfback pairing. Um, it's looking like it'll be Tom... Davies and Tommy Makinson most likely on the wings you would think um, centre was in a position for England that's a struggle to select for this match wasn't it because of so many injuries um, in that position so what are we thinking Reese Lynn and Stefan Ratchford maybe to play in those positions yeah or maybe it. Ash Hanley in the centre yeah um We'll see. Whatever it is, it'll surprise. Whatever I say, I'll be wrong. So we'll see what happens. Joshua's granddad said, "Why is it being played to clash with fixtures, giving some teams advantages of weakened opposition? Surely a Sunday, the Sunday of the cup final weekend, would be less disruptive. To say nothing of mixing bubbles. I think." So we had to play these stupid loop fixtures. If we just got rid of the bloody loop fixtures, none of this would have happened. Yeah, and if yeah. we'd have if we'd have known the roadmap was going to get pushed back a month, which we should have expected, then surely the clubs would have realised there was no benefit in playing this round of fixtures this weekend, especially given one of the matches is already called off from COVID. Loads of other matches have got COVID complications or clouds you know, potentially hanging over them because that's the state of play we're back in at the moment. Infections are going up. Um, what I would like to think is clubs are using these breaks where there's players... Now, so St. Helens, for example, anyone who's not involved in this squad or the Combi squad, uh, which should, by the way, be heavily St. Helens and Hull KR players that don't have COVID and have tested positive consistently, get them in rather than disrupting other sides. But... Um, they should all go and get vaccinated if they're not playing because they can have a bit of time to, if they have a bad reaction to it, recover. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm on. I'm in clinic on uh, when uh, Saturday morning, hopefully, so come down uh, and I'll, I'll do them myself. Get them <laughs> done. But yeah, John makes some strong points there that there might have been different options here. Maybe cup final weekend. Uh, but two matches that have already been had to be rearranged our playing being played that weekend now so it's been announced that Wigan versus Huddersfield well, Huddersfield versus Wigan sorry and Catalans versus Leeds will be played on the Friday night the night before the Challenge Cup final which is sensible it's the best freest time to, to get these games played um, but yeah the most disru the least disruptive thing would have been not having this in this game this round of league fixtures in the in the calendar yeah exactly yeah if we just been sensible, giving ourselves some room, especially with the World Cup. You know, having some extra room to do things would have been a sense. You know, having a having a fallow week at some point to play catch up fixtures because we knew there were going to be some at some point would yeah. have been sensible. Um, and it's caused this problem with the combis where um, it has the situation has been described as like an amateur side phoning up people who used to play for the club five years ago to see who who still can walk and could turn out on Saturday yeah uh, but which is something I've done many a time unfortunately but um, 
it just seems a yeah farcical situation. And it also it's it was a chance to, to see some media as well with the comedy stuff. You, know, you could have done a a glitzy reveal. You could have even done a vote like the MLB All Star, um, the way they do it in baseball. You know, you could have done something on Sky Sports News. I'm sure you, you, there was ways to do this, but because of the situation they found themselves back in. It's caused all sorts of problems. The problem is, the central problem is that the people who stand to benefit most from doing well in the World Cup, the individual Super League clubs, are the people who are doing their absolute damnedest to make sure that we've got no chance to compete. <laughs> yeah, because we need to get some sort of momentum back behind the sport. And I don't think Thursday night games between Wakefield and Wigan or Warrington and Lee are the way to do that. Um, I think winning a World Cup's the way to do that. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. It just, again, nobody ever bloody plans anything in this sport. Uh, but it's no point us getting too angry about it now. We've already got angry about this in the pre-season um, when it was all sort of announced and put out there. So, uh, you know, making our views known is fair, but I think there's nothing we can really dwell on around it I think what the most important thing is here is that England have a side out that will be players that are staking their claim for a place in the World Cup and that they get the opportunity to perform well in the training environment as well as in the playing environment and hopefully Covid doesn't fuck any of that up luckily there's no whole KR players in the squad is there so they shouldn't they shouldn't cause problems no and that might yeah it Uh, might there is a couple of Leeds players, though, isn't there? And then Catalan's players are having to drive over from France because there's no flights. Uh, what preparation yeah. is that for a game? Only rugby league, yeah. Just it boggles. Presumably, they have to follow the same rules as players driving to and from games and training here, that they have to drive in individual cars they can't share. I'm not sure because they'd be in the they'd be in the Catalans bubble together anyway, wouldn't they? So yeah, but you say you say, but players that come to training, even though that they're in the same bubble, aren't allowed to drive together. Oh, so yeah. Well, there we go. I didn't think that necessarily applied at the elite level where they tested quite regularly and all of that sort of stuff anyway. But who knows? Who knows? Right, that's all the news anyway. There was loads of it. Um probably not the most positive things we've said on most of those things but we've uh, had a good good dig into some of those international squads so that's good stuff uh, all helps build towards the excitement for the World Cup which is is a big positive on the horizon that we're all looking forward to and hope goes off without a hitch thanks for everyone getting their fan views in uh, on all of those news stories some great stuff there shout out to the BBC Rugby League sports page totalrl.com and loverugbyleague.com for providing the stories for us to comment on and of course EFC keeping us on top of the rumour mill um, we're now going to move into match reviews <laughs> Right, yeah, it was round 10 of Super League. We only have five games to talk about, not the six we should have had. Um, And we're probably not going to go into as much depth as uh, as we normally do on the games just because the news was quite hefty this week. But you know us, we probably will forget all about that when we're halfway through talking about Wigan's woeful display against Hull KR slash Hull K's. Hull KR's outstanding defensive action efforts but we'll uh we'll start elsewhere wakefield versus castleford on a wednesday night it was wakefield 12 castleford 18 it was 10 6 to the visitors at half time and they were able to hold on to that mark to that win uh, liam moore was the referee in terms of the stats not much between the sides in the stats cast made slightly more meters wakey made an extra break Errors were level. Tackle success was very close. Really, it was just Cass's ability to actually score more tries that separated them in terms of the numbers and probably their inability to kick more goals that kept the scoreboard close. Um, individually, Daryl Olfert for Cass had 163 metres. Peter Matautia, probably the standout performer on the day for Castleford, uh, 
so I don't know if this was his one good game in in six or whatever Rob said last week or or not. But one try, one try assist, 12, 12 tackle bus, one hundred eighty one meters and two clean breaks. Liam Watts one hundred and five meters and three offloads. Nathan Massey one hundred and twenty meters. For the defeated Trinity side, David Fafita, 152 metres. You'd think he's going to be in the combis. Joe Westerman backing up his England selection with 41 tackles and 135 metres. Going both ways was Big Joe. Kalapi Tanganoa, another likely combi, 125 metres. And Reese Lynn, the other England selection out of the Wakefield squad. Five tackle bus and 105 metres. Do you want to give us the first fan view? So our first fan view, as always, is Carsten. Uh, Richardson's poor kicking nearly cost Cass the victory, but Wakey missed too many chances. Cass got lucky on one of their poor days. The injuries before half time didn't look good. When will Rob call the injury crisis as bad as never before? Um, so, from Carson in the future to DG Knight on the other end of the time scale, he said, If you were looking for champagne rugby, you've got a bottle of cooking wine and then left the cork out for a few days before trying to drink it. Not a pretty game. And that last pass into touch by Wakey just about summed it up. Despite this, it was a good nail bite for fans of the two teams and no lack of effort from either side. Two horrible looking knee injuries and hope both players are okay. Hashtag coif. Yes, yeah, so we already talked about Bill Tupu and bloody hell will they be sweating on Gareth O'Brien and his opportunity to maybe play in a Challenge Cup final is on the line, unfortunately, from his injury. Yeah, Fat Boy Rob said much needed win, but at what cost? Danny R played a lot better, apart from his goal kicking, and Cass just about deserved their 15th win in a row against the Pikeys. I hope Gaz O'Brien is fit for Wembley and the GF. Who's his girlfriend? <laughs> hashtag Coif, hashtag 1 5 in a row. Wakey White said another game where Wakey were just about the worst team but came up with errors at critical moments to give tries away. Thought Cass managed to dominate the Rook in a game more saw fit to allow a siesta period for each tackle. Wakey again struggling for last tackle options too and frustrating Cass didn't even have to play well to win. I I actually found this game quite enjoyable but at the same time not hugely engrossing until the last few minutes and you know I thank Danny Richardson for that because his wayward goal kicking meant that Wakefield was still in the game and when they scored with 10 minutes to go they actually then seemed to I wouldn't say dominate because no one really dominated this game but they seemed to have quite a few opportunities that just didn't quite click and I think through the game Wakefield's opportunities were blown uh, whereas Cass took their opportunities a little bit more um, and I think that was ultimately the difference. It was kind of like, um, you know, you know, we were talking before we started recording about like films that you can kind of watch and enjoy, but they have no like meaning or anything like that. They're just a throwaway comedy film. This was well, kind the, of that in it, rugby league terms. I think. BBC One on a Friday evening. Yeah. 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 Or, yeah. Or like a, a film you'll find on Comedy Central during the week. That sort of scale i think um because because i think bbc one's even probably got to have fed it a bit better <laughs> but um but at the same time it, it you know it was enjoyable uh, and entertaining so um but not necessarily high on quality and certainly not high on intensity cast were just about the better side pete metautia was just about the best player on the pitch um and wakefield will rue their blown chances but you know, it, it was fun, massively overshadowed by the two injuries just before half time. First to Gareth O'Brien, something of nothing. He he landed awkwardly after putting a kick up, and then the Bill Tupu won again. Something of nothing. He his leg bent awkwardly, reaching back for a bad pass, which we saw a few of those uh, passes behind the man from from Wakefield, but. Yeah, it did seem like Jacob Miller was just going to turn it around right at the end, but not to be. Yeah, I mean, not much more to add to this one, really. It was, yeah, come and go, and, and no one's going to remember it at the end of the season. No, I mean, the Jordan Turner try, which was very similar to the one in the Challenge Cup semi final, where did he actually get it down, um, or, or, or was he held up? But. The play that built up to it, Matauti with a very long 
bendy running and inside and out kind of across the pitch and then, and then a, a nice long ball out wide so you know, that was the highlight moment of the game um the best piece of skill in the game outside of that not a huge